Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Uh, and it's only 3.14 p.m. Usually I wait until the markets are closed to do the closing market wrap, but uh, it's been like watching paint dry since the initial pop this morning. And what I'm referring to is uh, Jerome Powell's uh, 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 press release uh, came out. Uh, it was about 8.25 this morning. Uh, I was watching the futures, and they just rocketed up. Uh, you know, as I've been saying for the last, uh, really this last week, um, Powell would speak today and tomorrow, and um, and that had uh, a very high likelihood of moving the markets one way or the other. And so very obviously his comments were beyond dovish. In fact, if you guys um, you know familiar with the old Prince song, this is what it sounds like when doves cry. Well, the doves cried today because his statements, what I've read, couldn't possibly be any more dovish. Uh, so he all but said, read my lips, I'm going to cut rates again. So uh, we know that that's coming. And so the market reacted on it. And again, you can see the pop was almost immediately uh, uh, following those, uh, the, uh, the release of those comments this morning. And uh, so we'll look at it. We'll start here. We're on this NQ 60 minute chart. And so we know that was a catalyst for this pop right here. We had a, a run up right there to resistance. I had a line there yesterday. I don't know where it went. It looks like it disappeared. Uh, there was a resistance line. Let me add it back where we hit yesterday. And, uh, you know, this could have went out either way, depending on uh, what uh, Powell said today. So what happened is we flagged down. We, we reversed right off it. And that's what I was expecting yesterday. But again, like I said, Powell had the uh, certainly had the... Uh, the, the ability and did to royal the uh, you know foil the technicals let's say here so what that turned out to be really if you look at it this way is a bear flag you uh, a bull flag I'm sorry you had that flagging action you had the impulsive move out of this wedge which was highlighted yesterday morning just before it broke out so you had the pop which met the measured target of the wedge and then we started to come back in but again uh, the uh, the dovish comments today from the Fed chairman popped us up now what happened uh, as far as the technicals go? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, similar to what I've been talking about, you know, for last few weeks now. Uh, nothing's changed on the weekly charts yet or the monthly charts right now. The longer term charts remain the same. In fact, here, let me get rid of this line here. Remove that trend line. Take this one. Drag it out. It's simply an extension of the existing divergences. So that's what we have now is uh, a marginal new high. And uh, that marginal new high simply extended the divergences that were already in place there. So uh, we haven't even come in for back tests on NQ, but we are back testing on QQQ. I'm going to get to that in a second. So again, nothing much changed, and we broke out, but uh, no follow through at all. We popped to new highs on. We took out that previous uh, those highs that NQ has failed at on several occasions. Uh, at 79.07 level here, popped above it, but we're hugging it right now. We're we're coming in back testing, so it hasn't failed. It's not a failed breakout. We'll just watch. Somebody asked me earlier today, Randy, what do you think the you know today brings, and and then what's the near term outlook? Today, I have no clue. I said that earlier. Absolutely no clue. I'd like to see what happens in the last hour of trading, but I'll get this video out because nothing huge is going to happen. We're not going to drop down here, nor are we going to close up here. Uh, we might rally a little into close. We might sell off a little into close. But what I'll be watching for, can we hold above this uh, recent breakout point around 79.07 on uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures here, as well as QQQ, which I'll get to in a second. And if so, can we build on those gains? Because we'll need to build on those gains to take out these uh, divergences right here. Uh, as of now, they're still very much intact, and uh, well, so this will be continued tomorrow. Okay, similar story on ES. Uh, I'll get to the index ETFs in just a second. So we had this wedge breakdown the other day, it started to get going. But again, as I said, Powell was coming up this week, and that was going to move the markets one way or the other. It was either going to build on uh, the breakdowns and, and give us some downside momentum, uh, which was my expectation, but uh, now he came out and went the other way and it's full on dovish right now. So that popped us up. And again, you can see it simply just extended the divergences that have already been building and uh, they're far from being taken out yet. Uh, so that's the story on uh, ES. Let's look at SPY and QQQ. Uh, let's start out. Let's go back to the 60 minute charts. That's what we're looking at on the futures. A yeah, little different story on the um, index ETFs because you don't have the round the clock trading. So I have slightly different trend lines. And on this one, you still have the wedges. You still have the divergence, which is probably most important. And remember, these divergences 
aren't just 60 minute they carry all the way out to the daily charts there's divergences on the weekly charts even the monthly so uh, that's what we're looking at there and uh, there's that pop to a marginal new high and so this is really just a breakdown right now and a back test of the wedge right close to the apex and it's not the exact apex but yeah close to it and that's where we are you can see we're just below the trend line right there the uptrend line on QQQ uh, with the divergences intact so we'll have to see if this breakout can be held and built upon or will fail um, this is the SPY 60 minute chart there's our uptrend line breakdown back test and we're still uh, after a brief overshoot again this is when the futures uh, kind of went crazy this morning before the market opened that carried over into the open but then they faded that and so far so it was a brief overshoot back into the wedge but we're just a hair below it uh, so again let's say just to be continued tomorrow uh, will this will this these new highs stick or not now something I want to point out on that anytime you're trading a stock ETF uh, looking at an index uh, there's a couple things two things that I like to see on a breakout whether it's a breakout of a chart pattern or breakout to new highs number one is impulsive price action what is impulsive price action uh, big big uh, green or red candle uh, I don't have well okay for example right here there was an impulsive breakdown there with a big red candle back here on SPY uh, even better on QQQ back then we had a, a breakdown there uh, that's an impulsive breakdown uh, today's move today's candlestick we're looking at daily chart this is not impulsive that's just a doji candlestick we're about to print right there if if we close right here I should here I'll turn off the uh, the line so you can see it there it is there's today's candle the spy is up 0.1 for 0.41% uh, and the other thing uh, to confirm an impulsive move uh, you want to see a breakout occur on above average volume ideally one and a half times or better your broker will give you the 60 90 or 100 day average volume usually and you want to see one and a half times better the average volume and that is that's not the case on the breakout today it's a uh, you know volumes not you know glaringly low but it is certainly not above average volume this is you know here's the average line right there this is an above average volume move this is above average volume these are high volume bars today is not so I uh, wanted to point that out QQQ same story day isn't over yet like I said the volumes not horrible but it's really not this is not uh, an impulsive move um, or very impulsive move so we'll see if it sticks uh, prices come first so let's see you know we did pop the new highs today let's see if we can close above there and hold above new highs um, but as of now like I said it's uh, mm, kind of a meh suspect kind of breakout if you will okay and turning the trend lines back on for QQQ on the daily chart here's our lows back from uh, was that early June I believe and there's that same uptrend line on the 60 minute chart and you can see it nice and clear here uh, they come in touch that candlestick the bottom of that candlestick perfectly uh, come in capture these candles here there's the breakdown again we saw this on the 60 minute chart and it just shows clearer it's just a breakdown and a back test right now of the uptrend line and uh, there's QQQ now that we pop to a marginal new high it gives us that confirmed divergence we had divergence essentially recently with the double top and this is still for all intents and purposes a double top you can be a little above a little below those previous uh, highs just like you were back here that one may have been slightly above as well we had a divergent high double top actually very similar technicals if you will you look at that we uh you know we had a well-defined uptrend line there we broke down wasn't very impulsive didn't go anywhere back tested for a little bit and then boom finally rolled over so uh, that's what we have here the Wall Street Journal had an interesting article today uh, talking about what they refer to as the gamma trap and that's how all these brokerage firms and money managers are using these uh, low volatility strategies for their clients and in that that they're attributing that to uh, these you know the fact that the market goes in these uh, moments of calm low volatility and all of a sudden you know ex volatility expands and you get the big movements uh, check that out if you get a chance but you know when I look at that and it kind of jives with what we've seen and, and this is the market that we've been in um, what I what I when I look at this chart what stands out to me is uh, an unusual amount of symmetrical moves you know the old saying you know in the markets are V bottoms are rare V tops are rare but what we've seen in the last couple years this goes back you can see here it's 2018 uh, are these sharp rips and almost a perfectly opposite 
rips and dips that come. You can see the moves are very symmetrical. Um, so we've seen a lot of that recently. And back here, this was in 2018, we had a few shots across the bow. And then things sort of uh, started to uh, normalize here. Actually, from about this point, you had a, a, a trend where the markets walked up. There was some back and forth, but not the big almost you know, one, two punches, you know, just back and forth, uh, equal rips and dips. But if you look at it this way, we had that big rip up, you know, the after the correction in 2018 off the lows and an almost equal rip down followed by an almost equal rip up. And that is quite unusual to see in the markets. And, and again, we saw it here. We had this recent correction here straight down and we had almost a perfect symmetrical V there uh, and so far again that's been the pattern so uh, who knows it doesn't mean we can't do this and keep going up or start to you know maybe vol uh, maybe this 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 trend starts to abate and we move sideways anything is possible but when you look at it here we had one two three four on the little ones maybe we get uh, something similar here just a point to note it's not doesn't have too much predictive value but the takeaway would be again you know that article talks about the gamma trap where all of a sudden uh, you know markets kind of fall asleep you know that's why I'm doing this video today and it's like nothing big is going to happen before the close get it out there early get some get some other work done and um, but uh, if we start to trend the other way I guess the takeaway would be you know that trend is likely to be pretty unidirectional uh, meaning straight down and uh, probably equal this this other one uh, we'll see Okay, uh, let's just conclude this video with uh, a couple breath indicators. I spent the day combing over dozens of different breath indicators, and they're all they're all uh, pretty much confirming the same thing. Uh, we'll look at this. Start out with this one. This is a Nasdaq Composite Index. Uh, down below, you have the Nasdaq Composite uh, with the NAAD up top. That is the Nasdaq Advanced Declining Line. You can see right here. There's a description which shows us the number of advancing stocks minus the falling stocks. And this is a chart I've used for many years. It has, I think, great predictive value. It is not, I'll repeat, not a timing indicator. It's showing you divergences and divergences, whether they're you know divergences against price and momentum indicators, or in this case, against price and a breadth indicator, they are far from timing indicators. They're just showing you that an impending trend change is likely something is wrong, something is not right under the hood. So you see these green arrows, uh, again, here's the NASDAQ composite down here. When the market's rising uh, in a healthy market, and if there's going to be a lot left after that, you will see the NAAD rising along with the market. And then what happens, it doesn't turn down uh, initially, the market doesn't turn down, but you will start to see then things change. And you see the divergence line. This, every single one of these blue lines up top and bottom show you the negative divergence between the NASDAQ Composite Index and the NAAD. And so without fail, again, without fail, when you get those divergences, you've had these corrections, and they all range from the uh, pretty healthy corrections, you know, 7, 8 percent, sometimes 9, 10, to well over 20, 40, even 50 percent in the last bear market right here. Uh, the red shaded box, in fact, show you the, the corrections that came afterwards. You can take a measuring tool on your own, or I might have another chart here that'll show that. So where am I going with this? Well, we have not had negative divergence on this one, the NAAD weekly, uh, I believe I'm on a weekly or daily uh, this would be a daily. We have not had divergence on the NAAD daily between the NASDAQ composite uh, since back here. And that may not look like much, but that was a, a bear market in several indexes, almost a bear market here in the NASDAQ, very close to 20% drop. This is not a log scaling here. Or are we looking at, yeah, we are looking at log scaling on the bottom, I believe so. Okay, there it is. You can see the big drop from the bear market back then. So there it is. And right now, we have, for the first time since 2015, right before that big drop, uh, correction that lasted for many, many months, uh, we have the divergence there. And again, this is not one chart. I'm not cherry-picking charts. Um, I focus mostly on the divergences in the NAAD, or the NASDAQ, I should say, not just the NAAD. Um, but you'll see the same things in the S&P 500. The reason is tech technology is the largest sector by far within uh, both the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. And when you look at the NASDAQ, they're mostly tech stocks. That's going to give you a cue on really what today's stock market is. And again, it's all about tech stocks.
tech stocks go down, the market's going down. There's just no way about it. It's simple mathematics. It's, it's due to the weighting in the S&P 500 and the uh, NASDAQ 100. Here's another one. I'll just hit on it real quick. You can pause the video if you want. These are divergences between the um, the, uh, the NAHL, the NASDAQ new highs, new low index, and then you can see the subsequent corrections. This is not log scaling down here. So that doesn't look like much, this drop, but that's a 55% bear market back in the Great Great Recession. Uh, that was a big drop back there as well, well over 10%, and then that big drop in 2015. So again, you look for the, the divergences on this indicator, which is measures, again, it's the uh, ratio of new highs to new lows, and uh, that uh, that has been falling. And there's a trend line I'm watching, too, to see if that trend line gets taken out. That would be a longer-term sell signal. And that very first chart that I pulled was the NAAD daily uh, comparing the uh, NASDAQ advanced declining issue line against the NASDAQ composite. This is a weekly chart, so uh, it puts everything, you know, end of week close. And uh, the weekly charts are better for, you know, the bigger trends. This is coming off the left. This goes back 20, over 20 years, 21 years. And you had big divergences coming up to the dot-com bubble. This is the dot-com bubble and bear market that followed back. The bubble popped in 2000, and that was a vicious bear market in the NASDAQ back then proceeded clearly by divergences between the NAAD weekly and the NASDAQ composite. Uh, again, we had divergences build up to the highs all the way leading up to the top in 2007, followed by that 55 or so percent bear market. And the only other times that we've had divergences on these indicate, this indicator um, between the NASDAQ was back here. Both led to sizable corrections back there. And then that big drop in 2015, that was the first divergent high. And from there, the divergence has really ex uh, extended. So you can see the NAAD weekly making lower lows with the uh, NASDAQ composite continuing to make higher lows. We had the divergence there, and it certainly played out for a 20, you know, what was that, about a 23% drop in the NASDAQ. We pushed back up. And uh, had we have taken out the divergences, meaning right here, had we gone up and removed or taken out these divergences, then that might set that, you know, at least would make this indicator not bearish at this point in time. But this is a red flag showing you that uh, we continue to diverge. What does it mean? Again, um, fewer and fewer stocks are doing the heavy lifting. It's your Amazon, your Facebook, your Microsoft. Um, those stocks, those overweighted mega cap stocks, are resulting in the bulk of the gains and when you get that it's just unhealthy you want to see early on in the market when it advances healthy uh, you see most stocks participating and again I could go through these one after another and I did I mean, there's quite a few on the chart here's another one this is the NASDAQ advanced decline line uh, against the NASDAQ composite and again you can see going back here there's the market top this was the bull, end of the bull market in 2007 the uh, Great Recession bear market that followed. And uh, you can see, again, without fail, these are the divergences. I, I be don't believe I missed any. You can freeze this video, drop me a line if, if you see that I missed a divergent high that did not follow with a substantial correction. Uh, so last time we had one was back here in uh, that big 2015 drop. Uh, here's the drop in the market right there, a shade in red. And you can see right here, leading up to the uh, highs back there, the big, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this point in time, we didn't even have it at the Q4 correction. There's the Q4 correction started right here. That was the drop. This time we have it. And so far we had a little drop there that the correction we recently had, we're right back slightly above that high. Um, but this would indicate, again, uh, the likelihood of more downside. It's not guaranteed. You know, we had one here that didn't play out for a lot, but that was a very small divergent high there. This one's quite a bit larger at this point in time. Uh, not quite to the scale of this one. But again, look at all the indicators. It's not any one indicator that's going to tell you anything. You want to take them all together. And another one. Might look a little busy here, but just look at the divergence lines, the red lines up here. I'm going to circle them with this blue tool here. One, two, three, four, five, and then a little one there. Bear market in 2000, from 2000 to 2002, and almost 2003. Uh, the Great Recession there, and every other correction, uh, decent correction that we've had throughout this bull market, including the big Q4 drop, clearly proceeded by the divergences. So we had the Q4 drop, those divergences played out, but just like the stock market, 
made a new high, but this breadth indicator um, has continued to diverge and warns that uh, that was just a shot across the bow and there's probably another drop coming. And of course, you know, the, we don't have, these aren't sell signals, but they're just indications that uh, things are not well under the hood, um, you know, for another 20, 30% more upside in the market, unlikely. And then finally, last one, we'll just look at uh, one other, again, different breadth indicator, but telling us the same thing. This is the uh, top, we have the NASDAQ composite index. Down below, we have the NASDAQ percent of their stocks trading above, the percentage of stocks trading above their 200-day moving average. Uh, very simple, well used indicator. I have this again also with a 50 day moving average as well. We'll show you that one and then we'll wrap up. Uh, but it's it's very, very clear. This was the great recession right here. This was the bear market back in 2007. Doesn't look like much because this is not log scaling. So that throws it there. That was a 50 something percent drop. So just keep that in mind that these are all substantial corrections. NASDAQ composite index was going higher. And when the market's strong, everything is good under the hood, so are the percentage of stocks trading above their 200-day moving average. All of a sudden, when that number starts to drop, it simply tells you that market breadth is deteriorating, things are not well, it's fewer and fewer overweighted mega cap stocks like the FANG stocks are doing all the heavy lifting and then boom you get these corrections. So without fail, again you can look at the chart, freeze it, look at and, and again this one's more of a series of uh, divergences, a lot like the stock market and they're all resulting. It's not again, not as if these divergences aren't playing out. Each one's playing out for a correction um, but the divergences continue to build, so you have to look at it this way as one much larger divergence, which really sets the stage for a larger correction, i.e. really a bear market. We already had a 20-something percent drop, so if we have anything larger than that Q4 drop, obviously it will uh, it'll flip all those long-term uh, indicators that I still have on my monthly charts and some of the weekly charts that are still bullish, still indicating a bullish primary trend. Those will certainly have flipped to, to bearish if we undercut those uh, 20, uh, fourth quarter 2018 lows by, by quite a bit. So that's what it looks like on the 200 day moving average. You can see really a clear deterioration. Same thing, in fact, it's an alarming rate on the 50 day. This is the same chart here, NASDAQ NDX, the NASDAQ 100 up top, I should say, in the percentage of stocks trading above their 50 day instead of their 200 day moving average. And you can see the same series of divergences here. Let me give you the next one that looks a little clearer uh, because I have the uh, drops measured out here in this one. So you can see every single divergence line marked and uh, I haven't updated this. This one's pretty steep. It goes from here to here. So right here, we just continue to diverge. Uh, markets inching higher. Uh, but it's starting to feel the, you know, the pressure. We had that 24% drop right there on that divergent high. And as I said before, I went on vacation, a new marginal new high would not do anything to change the longer term outlook uh, in the charts, including these, these breadth indicators. This is not something I cover in most videos. I just cover price and the momentum indicators. Uh, so you can see this is really a, an alarming rate, this drop off here in the stocks above their 50 day moving average, uh, trading above their 50 day moving average, I should say. And again, you can see all the percentage drops that came after those divergent highs. They were all corrections, 10% or more. And some of those were bear markets, 20% or more. All right, we'll wrap it up here. And uh, again, like I said, the market, the, right now the near term momentum's up. And you know, back in the beginning of the video, I gave you some levels to watch. Let's see if we get rejected off those back tests of those trend lines. Let's see if this marginal new high in the uh, in the Nasdaq and S&P 500, if those fail, uh, and maybe we get some sell signals. If not, you know, we don't have any sell signals now. So you sit back and watch, and you know, do what I'm doing: trade commodities, uh, ag commodities, nat gas. There's a lot of things, and individual stocks with the best looking setups. Um, and just wait, be patient for the next big, uh, big move in the market because it should be coming soon. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.